Welcome back guys. Once again, we are working on the K-Swap 308 and today we are going to work on bending up a roll bar. Now I've talked about some of my plans for this in the past, mainly that I am not gonna build a full-blown roll cage in this thing and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is I want this car to do double duty as a track car and a street car. And as a street car, it is not safe to have a full-blown roll cage in it. The tubes next to my head, due to how small this cabin is, would be about an inch away. Smallest bump's gonna send my noggin right into them. I don't wanna do that. Don't wanna play that game. The second reason is, even if it were safe, if we had room, I'm not gonna wanna climb in and out of this thing all the time. That would suck. I know myself, that's not how I want this car to be when it's finished. The rules for Global Time Attacks Limited Class mean we have to have a four-point bolt-in roll bar at minimum. So that's what we're gonna build, but we're gonna spend the time to make this thing absolutely perfect. We are gonna focus on making it fit really nice and tight to the roof. We are going to focus on getting all of our tubing nodes spot on. We're gonna make this thing fit really nice. We're gonna make it really strong. We're gonna build nice load plates, the whole nine. We will, do, we will go over all of the details on this thing. I'm excited to show you guys the whole process. Let's get into it. We're starting this episode out with some rivets, and yes, that's exactly how Ferrari decided to hold the headliner into this car, and it's completely absurd. We've got to remove the headliner, and I'll show you why in a moment, but that process entailed drilling out the rivets, including some that are hidden behind the quarter windows, which I tried really hard not to remove. But thankfully, the entire process worked out, and the headliner came out without too much effort. Now the reason to remove the headliner is because it has this roof console light thing and that's in the way of making a nice fitting roll bar. With the console removed and the headliner reinstalled, I use this two axis laser to help us find the exact center of the car. And this will help us build the nicest fitting roll bar that we can. You can see from the outside of the car that this laser does the job really well. On the other hand though, it does begin to highlight the fact that this car isn't perfectly symmetrical. With the center of the car marked, I hopped inside and began using this tool, a bend protractor. And it is not absolutely required, but highly recommended for anybody doing any tube work involving bends. I'll show you how it works. Each side of the bend protractor has a ruler on it, and I've made my own mark at four and a half inches, which tells me where to clamp tubes in my tubing bender. Four and a half inches later is where the bend begins, and then where the degree is indicated, on the other side of that is zero. That's where the bend ends. Four and a half inches later is another mark so that I can use this tool in either direction. And the benefit is this tool will tell me what degree of a bend I need. And I've made some marks so that I can tell how long each bend will take, how much tube each bend will consume. I'll show you this thing in action so you can see how it works in a practical sense. Here you can see the marks that I made previously and I'll hold it up. You can see my four and a half inch mark is nine inches away from the center of the car. I promise it is, the perspective looks weird here. I've made a mark where the bend ends at zero and then moved the bender down to the next bend where I've made a mark at my four and a half inch position and then again where the bend ends. And by using this protractor, we can figure out exactly how long this tube needs to be. So let's put these measurements on paper and understand how to actually use them. Now, if you don't want the technical explanation, feel free to look at the chapters down in the timeline and skip on ahead. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna draw up the roll bar. Yes, I'm very artistically talented. I'm gonna mark center just like we have in the car. Now, what we've seen on the tape is that our first mark is at nine inches. And then we need to add four and a half for our ruler measurement. We know that the bend begins four and a half inches away from our mark. Now the first bend that the protractor shows us is 54 degrees. And if I reposition the bender to our end mark, we are at five and a quarter inches away. We add our four and a half inches again, since that's how much we need to reach our bend. And then we have a 32 degree bend this time around. And finally, a 16 and seven eighths inch run down to the floor. Now, if we look at the protractor, we know that the 54 degree bend consumes six and three quarters inch of tube, and the 32 degree bend consumes four and an eighth inch of tube. If we look at all these measurements together, we have 51 inches from center to the floor, or 102 inches end to end. Let's transition these numbers over to a piece of tube. We know we need 102 inches of tubing in overall length, so that'll be where we cut it. 
Now the only other dimensions that we actually need to transfer to the tube are our center line at 51 inches, nine inches to each side of that, and then 16 and a half from those lines to the end. And then we get to put it in the tubing bender, one of the coolest pieces of equipment I have in the shop. It works by putting a piece of tubing between these two dies, and then using air over hydraulic pressure, it uses an arm to bend the tubing around the larger of the two. It's got an indicator on the side so you can tell how far you've made your bend, and it works like this. Now while this thing is bending up, if you're enjoying this content and you like this channel, do me the favor of leaving a like because the algorithm likes that, and subscribe if you want to see more and follow along with this build. It's support like that that helps this channel grow and find new eyes and allows me to keep making videos like this. Now that you've seen this thing bend some tube, let's get a main hoop bent. I'll follow all of the markings and the dimensions that we outlined earlier. With the whole thing bent up, the next step is to cut the legs to shape. They do need to be angled to match the bottom floor of the car. So I'm gonna cut these at, give or take, a 10 degree angle. Do this and you'll wind up with a main hoop. And then maybe a second one. And then maybe a third one. Which is how many times it took me to get this whole process right. But with the third hoop in, you can see the way that it fits. I've left room for some interior panels and it just barely makes contact with the headliner, which is what I want. And for future reference, I do plan on redoing this headliner in something like black suede later. With the main hoop made, it's time to make some base plates. And this is what we're gonna use to bolt the cage down to the floor. This part looks simple, but I spent a lot of time figuring out exactly how I wanted to accomplish this. With the templates made, I cleaned off and then cut up myself a piece of scrap steel. I transferred over my template pieces and then took this thing over to the bandsaw where I cut all of my pieces out. I had to do this whole process not once, not twice, but three times because after the second time, I found out that the car is not the same side to side. Here you can see the cut out pieces on the workbench. And from here, it's time to clean them up on the belt sander so we have some nice curves and really clean edges. We want these parts to look nice and finished, not like we cut them out on a bandsaw. So it's about 11 p.m. I've been here since eight o'clock this morning working on this thing and it's going slowly, but that's not a surprise to me. I've done this type of work enough times to know what it takes to do. I'm probably going a little bit slower than normal because I'm putting in that extra effort to make it turn out as nice as I possibly can. So I've done the main hoop three times each time, just getting that last little bit of fitment out of it. Any of the three would work just fine. They would all look good in the car. 99% of people would look at even the first one that I did and say, man, that looks great. But I want it to be as good as it can be. Finally got it seated how I want. I'm really happy with it. You could not buy a store-bought roll bar that fits as nicely, so that's going for it. It's onto the base plates. I got the lower base plates done. Spent a lot of time on them, just getting everything fitted just right, making sure that it's engineered properly so I can get to the backside, get all the hardware in there, get backing plates on it, things like that. Took a lot of time to get all that stuff right. I'm gonna call this a night and we will be back tomorrow morning and see what we get done. Be right back. The first order of business the next morning was to get my base plates tacked together. I wanna to be able to bolt these things into the car at least through the factory seatbelt bolt, which is what the top portion of these do. Although we'll have to add some more holes in the future. But now we can tack the main hoop in. Now, although we did have the main hoop in place yesterday, it wasn't with our base plates. So now I'm spending time to get this thing positioned exactly how I want so that we can tack it in place. And I'm using a ratchet strap to squeeze those last fractions of a millimeter out and get this thing perfect side to side or as close as I can. Part of that job was to finesse the gaps at the bottom of the tubes. I wanted these to sit flat against our base plates so that the welding is nice and clean. In wanting to weld these in, I got very particular about the way that it fit and actually spent several cumulative hours getting this whole thing set up just right. With the tube in place, I finally was able to tack it in. All right, I already know what's coming. Maybe you already made the comment. Hey Mike, we said you messed up by putting in a carpet before a roll bar if you're gonna put a cage in it. And then I said, no, it doesn't matter because I'm going to put a bolt-in bar. So 
who cares? I forgot about the whole like tack it together while it's in there. So you guys were kind of right and I was kind of wrong. Can we just, uh, you know, move past that one? And just, you know, cool. After getting the tube tacked into place, I noticed that it had shifted just a tiny bit. Not enough for anybody else to notice, but I just couldn't find myself happy with it. So I cut the tube out and started making changes. I added a degree to the bottom bend on each side of the tube to close up the gaps to the headliner. And it was this process that truly demonstrated just how not straight this car is. The gaps are different on each side and the measurements side to side are simply not the same. Even the base plates are about a quarter inch different in dimension side to side. I think this is a factor of this being a body over frame car and the fact that it's pseudo hand built. I can't say that I'm surprised, but it makes it tough to build a truly nice roll bar in this thing. Eventually though, I got it. So here you guys can see there is just the littlest gap. It's the littlest one. That's all we need. And then it just barely makes contact on the top. We run across, we have this thing perfectly centered. I don't know if you guys can see the centered mark in there, but it looks pretty good. And then if we come over to the other side, what do you know? It's just the littlest gap. Can you see that? The littlest one. I'm just making contact on the top. So we're looking good. And then I'm also happy because this thing lines up perfectly with the A pillars, sorry, D pillars. And it's just, bang on side to side. So I'm real happy with it. The only thing that I would change if I were building an actual cage is that I would want this point to be touching here uh, and having this bar basically run down this edge here and basically just weld it down the whole thing. Um, it'd make door bars a real challenge, but because I'm gonna put an interior panel back in this, we need the gap. Pretty happy with it though. It's looking pretty good. And then a lot of what I was focusing on was I wanna get, even if it's kind of small, probably a, like a socket cap bolt through this back corner here so that I can have a bolt on this side of the tube. So we'll have like one here, one here. We'll probably put uh, one through the front here and then maybe one over here and then like do some sort of gusset or something cool. Figure that part out later. But it was important to me to have a bolt on this side of the tube. So we'll put one back in that corner. We got room for one there. Next on our list is building a bar that spreads across the bottom. And this is going to help us keep this whole thing in shape. And it's gonna make sure that this thing doesn't move around as we continue to build it. So I measured the bottom angle, cut a 51 inch tube to span the gap, and then took this thing over to the tube notcher to cut it. The best part about this clip is that you can see me absolutely hammer my hip on the engine hoist and get myself caught on a bungee cord at the same time, looking like a complete idiot. With the tube cut, I cleaned up the ends so that we can put it into the car. Because the tubes taper towards each other as they go up, fitting it into place is relatively simple and doesn't require any hammering on it. So once it was in, I measured and made sure that the gaps were the same on each side and that the thing was level, and then I fuse tacked it into place. So let's take a look at where we're at. We've got the main hoop in, we've got the base plates put together, and we've got a crossbar in place holding the whole thing in shape. I think this thing's starting to come together really well. The tubes follow the body lines nicely. They follow the door gaps. I'm happy with the gaps to the headliner. Overall, I think we're making really good progress. There's still a lot left to do though. We've got the diagonals, the belt bar, the down bars, and the rear base plates. And I'm loosely considering a very low door bar spanning to the front for stiffness, but I haven't really decided yet. All right, if you're watching the timeline at the bottom of the video, you already know we're kind of close to the end of this one, but don't leave yet. Hold on, this isn't an outro yet. I've got some stuff to share. I don't wanna drag this roll bar build on any longer than it needs to. I know you don't want that either. So in the next roll bar episode, we're gonna finish this thing entirely 
except for perhaps the welding. Or if there's enough time, we'll weld the whole thing too. We'll call it done. That's the goal. However, I've got to leave town this weekend for my girlfriend's brother's wedding. I can't miss that. And then in like two weeks, I'm leaving town for a week and a half for a long off-road camping trip all through Idaho with some of my best friends. We do it every year. We had to take last year off because of COVID. So we are all really excited for this. I'm gonna document the whole thing and make a few part series for you guys. And I hope you are looking forward to that. It should be a lot of fun. But with leaving town, I'm trying really hard to make sure I've got content while I'm gone. I know everybody should take a break, including me, and I'm gonna enjoy my vacation, but I'm trying to front load some stuff a little bit. So that gap between yesterday and today, the gap, is actually a whole day. I spent yesterday filming and editing an entire episode to go up while I'm out of town in two weeks. And because I'm leaving town, uh, I guess in about 48 hours for a wedding, I've gotta get home and edit this entire episode so it can go up tomorrow morning and get all of my stuff together for Thursday's episode two. I've, the pressure is on and there's still an entire card to build. So with all that said, plan on the roll bar episode for Tuesday of next week, one week from today. On Thursday, we're gonna be diving into what I think are maybe the 15 or best 20 tools, the best bang for your buck, the stuff that I think everybody that wants to build a car in their own garage without spending a fortune to do it should have. I'm gonna go through what I have here in the shop that are my favorites that I think you can find for cheap or for a deal. You don't have to spend a fortune to build really cool shit. And I think that should be a lot of fun to show exactly what you need to do it. You guys know I love talking about tools. It should be a fun one. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think about that episode, how it's gonna go. With all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all of the support. I am really excited that you guys are here and just participating in this channel. So thank you again. I will catch you all on Thursday. I'll see you then.